as usual, it's like a, you know, standing room only for poetry. We look at the world to see the earth, Ed Roberson observes in his latest collection. But what of the world is seen in looking at the earth? Anyone who's viewed a satellite image of our planet, which is to say almost everybody on today's network globe, whether you're, you're selling chickens in a market in Quito or a CPS student in the south side of Chicago, has wondered what of the world is seen in looking at the earth. It's a tricky universal question in more ways than one. Hence Roberson's lyric meditations on the first person plural throughout his book. In his essay on the origin of the work of art, Martin Heidegger considers the difference between world and earth to be a pressing philosophical matter. The world grounds itself on the earth, and the earth juts through the world, he writes. As self-opening, the world cannot endure anything closed. The earth, however, as sheltering and concealing, tends always to draw the world into itself and keep it there. Ed Roberson is a poet who dwells in the rift between world and earth, unable to endure anything closed, and yet drawing the world into himself, and for a time keeping it there. So large-mannered have our movements grown, he writes, that all the earth is as if too short a runway. Our large-mannered movements disastrous as they may be, are not without a certain magnanimity nonetheless. Roberson lays out the world like drinks all around. One of the most extraordinary qualities of Roberson's work is the high-resolution detail he brings to the big picture. We see a bullet from the Civil War surface in the wood of an old tree the carpenter fashions into a tabletop grown into the open by hand. We see an aquamarine crystal Quetzalcoatl from the Museum of Anthropology in New York City, in in Mexico City. It was colonialist of me to misread that. Uh, In rose alabaster, naked, his legs lightly bent, and he's laughing, or as if gotten up in the middle of the night of trans-dimensional life, and he has to pee. Listen closely to Roberson's verse. John Coltrane can be heard in the silence at the end of one recording to say, help. Twice a veteran of the Explorers Club of South America expeditions, he's climbed mountains in the Peruvian and Ecuadorian Andes and explored the upper Amazon jungle. He's worked as a diver for the Pittsburgh Aqua Zoo, motorcycled across the United States, and traveled in Mexico, the Caribbean, Nigeria, and West Africa. Roberson has regarded the world inside and out, as it were, and invests it with value for us. This might be why to see the earth before the end of the world begins with images of our planet and ends with the sound of coins falling onto a tabletop. The days change emptied from my pockets copper pennies on the desk's surface. Pocket change, surplus, and salvage. I've lost everything, Roberson writes, to those pennies wakening on the surface of a desk. Ed Roberson is the author of numerous books of poetry, including To See the Earth Before the End of the World, which was a runner-up for the Los Angeles Times Poetry Award, Atmospheric Conditions, which was chosen by Nathaniel Mackey for the National Poetry Series and a finalist for the Academy of American Poets Lenore Marshall Award, and Voices Cast Out to Talk Us In, which won the Iowa Poetry Prize. Roberson's literary honors include the Lila Wallace Writers Award and the Poetry Society of America's Shelley Award, among many others. He lives in Chicago, where he has taught at Columbia College Northwestern University, and the University of Chicago. Please join me in welcoming Ed Roberson.
Thank everyone for coming. I uh, want to do something, um, something a little odd. That guy you just heard about, <laughs> I'm not quite sure I'm him anymore. About t three years ago, I had an operation in my head. And, uh, well, I always have operations in my head. They're poems. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I had, to, I had um, normal pressure hydrocephalus. So I had to have a shunt put in to drain the fluid off my brain. It's right here. Hal. I call him Hal. And I just had him checked uh, about a week ago. And the way they check to see if he's open or closed is they put this sort of Star Trek transponder thing upside your head. And they take a, a huge magnet about this size and shove it in a little hole. And uh, if nothing happens, it's, it's all right. You know, just, it's weird to have somebody, <laughs> somebody opening and closing your brain, you know, while you're sort of sitting there and feeling absolutely nothing. You know, but uh, the neurosurgeon, uh, Dr. Rosenal, is, um, he just laughs at me. I, and I laugh at him, too, because he did a good job, but uh, it just feels funny. And the interesting thing that came after that, after the operation, was whether or not I'd be able to write. And um, it turned out okay. They said I had, uh, I was being kind of foolish, being worried about it, but it, it, it actually turned out all right. There were a couple of... Uh, days in rehab when I wasn't sure you know I was going to be able to walk even so that other guy uh, Rosenau did something with him and this new guy here is going to read you some new poems from a new perspective I guess it would be and on top of that I'm going to read you some old poems uh, back in 1970 um, Andy Welsh and, and it was um, you might know his book uh, the Roots of Lyric, who's uh, just retired from Rutgers University, um, the English faculty there, Andy Welsh, and um, Dick Vandal, uh, an artist friend of mine, we decided to take uh, the two BMWs to um, California. So we, we did a cross-country trip to California. And I, when I came back, you know, um, two months staring at the road, you know, you're crazy. But I came back and uh, out of the hallucinations and all of the funny things about hearing the motorcycle in the middle of the night that stays with you a long time, I started the manuscript about, uh, the, uh, about the ride. And I was studying at the time, I was studying Native American power songs and war chants. And I was reading Marche, Eliade, and Campbell. And, you know, remember those days. Maybe you don't. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I started the manuscript, uh, and I lost it. I lost the manuscript, uh, and when I was selling my house about a couple of months ago, I found it. So, so what I'm going to do is um, read you the old, old Ed. There's a middle Ed in there somewhere, uh, and then I'm going to read you the new Ed. Okay? So that's the deal we're going to try to handle here. I'll start out with the kid. Uh, like I said, this is 1970, and I'm just going to read a, a, a couple of them just so you'll get the sense of what I was doing back then. Because the amazing thing that I discovered uh, from reading these old things is that I never gave up this manuscript. Even though I didn't have it in hand, I kept writing parts of this manuscript again and again. Some of this um, you, may, you, may, you may hear again. Okay, uh, this is MPH. As if I've seen enough, I put what I've seen between my eyes and think the trigger was my being born. As if I've been enough, I put where I'll have been clear across country and try to make it the trigger. What I'm up against is going to get pulled on it this trip. I see people look at each other and see the historical figure across country. Wanting to get there, they drove each other and one to a position where he shot the next motherfucker to drive him to anything and it was himself. This whole trip from Jump Street was up against. And people came armed with beginnings loaded for starts. And the killer was, it wasn't any enchanted horse, fairy tale enchanted horse they got on for beauty and couldn't get off. It was white, it was the sails of the prairie clouds and schooners and space with no overboard that Europe 
or its fairy tale virgin broke a vessel on the washed up, the free. Leaving town beside two rivers just made one beside the river here, the Mississippi, just new now from the Allegheny, from Mon Monongahela, just become the Ohio before we hit the Ohio line, before we're out of town, before the just then Ohio is the Mississippi, we pull up beside a city truck with a dump full of young black bloods, like in Mississippi. At the West End Bridge leaving Pittsburgh, headed for Ohio state line, which we will never actually see, the first of those drawn lines, which we will never see, we see that this is Mississippi, beside the two rivers just made one. Not even out of town, another load of brothers sees two cycles and a brother loaded on the back headed cross country. Five waves, some where you headed, nine black power hands, one peace sign, one you'll never make it, and the one pair of still leaving with me eyes. When we made the middle passage, didn't we walk the waters? Didn't we have the waters paved with the skulls of our grief for each other? Didn't we make it on ourselves when we crawled under the Mason Dixon? Didn't we jump the fence over Jordan? Didn't the river rebed behind us and turn blood because the bloods wouldn't tell? Didn't we make it to this one side on our other? On ourselves, didn't we? Didn't we make it? Didn't we get up, put up when we went back down home? Didn't we hide in each other? No hotels that stood uppity, a chance of getting shot. Didn't we walk on the shadow years later of Emmett children who did, didn't it? Didn't we make our step higher than just to walk? Didn't the westward push opening the country turn middle passage, trying to shut us out, panic that the plow flat and hardness of our feet having stood on each other? Didn't we open the red rock like our hearts? Didn't it bleed too to yield too to eat? Didn't it? Didn't it? Didn't it rain? Didn't it rain? By the edge of town, north is the same as south. By the state line, the only line is broken is out ahead by the toll. Directions make the contract on his throat. Turn to look too many and a chicken of his head is twisted off. Everywhere there is to come from is come here to see it stand on its neck like a top. By Cleveland, the crossfire of getting north. The Underground Railroad, you can hear it, under the road. And by Detroit, the Teutonic mask of the mother of fast death and racked cab truck over engine eats double, cuts off the top of us all while the hills are hunting for it. By Albion, the wind thinks itself apart to pieces. Its suburb part axes down its voices, the trees. Indians, their root drinks, drank to each other the timber, fed back bricks through windshields, the top soil like cornice off these buildings, the land looks like the bottoms of the dry lake, the clouds take any shape they please, an anvil is over the gold dome of, of Wisconsin. By Minnesota, the Mayans have slipped Frank Lloyd Wright a self-destructive motif in a warehouse for revenge. The landmark society is civil defense. Between two towns, blue earth and black earth, the jolly green giant is grown real. The white blondes of their hair there turns green in the light of the shade loading trucks. They are like vegetables. By the Mississippi, he merely has to pee. The family river come out of this everywhere there is to come from Come here, come here, come here, baby, look at here. They knew their direction back was up, rising like they knew the combination to a, a safe in a number, and they threw their bones and they flew. They hope a mathematic in every direction, black spots on the crap dice fly in buttermilk cotton all over the sky, like white on rice, their eyes on the clouds they follow. The weather, they get away in it, Black limousine storm, they fly the sounds up high as they go. 
all the head up, top down, loud out riding, kind of riding they do even in walk is the echo of that break. It is the figure, the music, and like here, I go they cross country, all up, all up, out of my head, over my head. No one to go that veil, hand on the plow. I hear music everywhere. Hold on. Wonder do the head goose hear the motor? Swim in the sky water, wonder do. He hear his brothers awake, jam the wind out of shape about nothing to lose and how the house of directions be all out of shape because they was born. Leaning on the corner, getting their back beat, beating their own head on out, head on out, head on out. Straight out is flat and the yellow wind crosses your crossing of it, hand on head like the clear adobe wall of that house of four directions, four cornered house that is the crossing in which moving is leaving against the corner post your head against the road, your head into the dunce corner of your wake and a rough today of Sunday when outside is past where the post still stood. House of fire, ain't no water around. House catch fire, Moses ain't no water around. Throw yourself out the window and let all burn down. The pillar, dark behind, the dark cloud, the cycle trailing smoke, something's wrong. Right now, too far gone, first, both lean on the, hit, on, the lead, on the lead by falling back full throttle, then the walls shake. Out of control or want of it comes enough to stop. This looks like where we eat. The rider spells, spreads out the map on the driver's back, like out a window, like on a window out of the wind while moving. Some seeing through what is spread out on the ahead for both is foreseen like collision and corrected for. The idea of stillness of the map, moving to necessary changes of mind when sign passes, or at St. Christopher carrying the weight of his weight's eyes, a giant and a child in that story, a black and a white in this one, crossing who both could be either and both but also are the national figure for trouble, not on the dashboard. The rifle behind is the gun rack. The road signs barely readable for bullet hoes. The race down, the race drawn fires permanent letting in of light appears through the map on the driver's back out of habit. Not a sign given is left readable. No idea where we are and this fucking machine needs help. Uh, we broke down outside of um, Salt Lake City. All of those names, <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. All of those, um, it's full of names of, of places. The Monongahela, the, the um, Allegheny, those are the two rivers out that, that border Pittsburgh that actually turn into the Ohio River at the point in the middle of Pittsburgh and goes into the Mississippi River. So we followed all of that. This, what I've done is take you as far as the, um, uh, as, as, as Denver, and, and it goes on from Denver. But just so that I could hear that myself, I sort of imposed upon you uh, the reading of it, uh, just so that you could sort of give me some sense of what it sounds like. I found that thing a couple of months ago, and I haven't read it. <laughs> I was afraid to read it, as, 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 as it turns out, I had reason to be. <laughs> okay. H here are the new things. The writing is unusually slow for me, and it's slow in the sense that it comes almost like line by line or word by word. And uh, I usually, up to this point, had been writing like a painter. I would see things and then get the words to things. And um, the words I would try to make as sinuous or as angular as what I was seeing, the tones of what I was seeing. So all of a sudden uh, what I began getting was, um, like I said, you know, I could see 
uh, but the words came very slowly. And when I was seeing things, they were, in the writing this is, they were slowly going into place. So I think what you're probably going to hear is uh, stuff like this. Fog, it's grains of water, the air, sand form, grinds out the skyline, then the streets, the little park, stubborn green the last to wear down until the gulls white jots on a blanched grass join the disappearance and turn tail into water now cloud leans its back against the window blocking the view blank thought or the stop to rest of that gone grown gray that dimming but not enough bright to reflect in the glass the room inside, like an x-ray, the errant hazes of my breath's own world condensations. The difficult pain come down to a picture, neurotic vapors condense into a scene. I thought I could hold these sightings up against. The room dissolves into the internal light as something does when nothing grown more nondescript than is, is left. And that was it. A universe of so much of it, I'm sure time would like to know what a moment is other than it's one. The umbilical ear shaped galaxy listening to one drop of sudden afternoon rain beneath the eaves in one of the backwash summer eternities I'm sure it would like to duck into that off time slip into centuries, a dark age, a Macy's and done some shopping. Whole histories a diversion dropped when the sky clears up. Limits detail lived as all that there is and the whole of those lived as all of their ones, both at once and wholly aware they are done an entire time we see as ever. When they are emptied, old houses turn up a remnant they've all hid beneath a built-in's disavowal. Footprint of some unsatisfied moment with the original, done over. Left in linoleum, justified only as flooring in a storage closet, or unremoved to jelly-ripe colors stomped to creosote. Once paved over in new flooring, rolled up and moved, now cope an even older dowdiness back in the open. The real ghosts specified, particular, as we were too, taken out. That moment unsatisfied within the original, born to always begin. Out in the clouds, the panicked herd of heat lightning gallops back and forth, corralled into a sky fenced by the earth into everywhere overhead. The animal, at the grounded mercy of what it can't hear, but is coming underneath the audible. The smell before storms that raises those hairs, the ear, that lifts your head out of the crowd before the nose even catches on. A wind of which you can't see of what if anything is there except the answer a full leap ahead of any question, an alertness that runs you last to die. The shove rocked, wrapped tightly around the emptied shoulder of a river, a canyon, drafty bone of the ancient water woman. Chromatic threads of sedimented layers spun through with the mountain's mineral veins weave into a wall, a tapestry the work of eons. The water shuttled down and back into the sky, tints grain by grain, the weft of moment bound in the warp of day to night. Light's rocking loom, the thunder of its irregular foot beating the floor against that slight it has taken, and at its most hurt, the staggering tornado. The drunken ones, the earth, for them, it hasn't gone well. Forgotten by their children, they sell calendars. 
two days after the fourth, and the last personal fireworks sail screaming to silence, and the hump of night sound stops, bouncing us into the air, riding the blown up awake. There comes this stillness, richer than the kid's bomb allowance has run out, but not rich as for real is. The rest of the world caravan packed up for something to trade or attack, loaded. No feel of end to explosive celebration, nor to fighting, just ceasefire mostly. A hold so desperately grasped, if it were breath, it would weigh the touch of an army of triggers. The daily boot on our chest, waiting our answer to its questions. Do you want to get up? The runoff. You won't see it sidewinder lap itself nor slither through natural, natural gulches leaving the city. In flatland, a transportation sink channels its runoff in planned dry beds. The L's raw iron aqueducts or underground. You see it shoot to shoot down the tr track, a rolling of straight edge waves, ties without curl ups on the bank to sun. From the only prairie areas, the high-rise balconies you see, the old reptilian shapeshifter scratch the day off on the city, evolve its bird and leave what's shed as the trains lit windows, give it glowing new scales, where inside swallowed news is being read, or where from the inside, deeper inside than what a stair takes up, a leaned-on dark takes up the night with its own reflection in the window. This is Journey's oldest conversation, headed where? This is the clock. Though it is battery run, this one's is as old a sound as a garden's water clock outside, this one inside on the wall. What better puts the voice of the indigenous to silence in the house than what the light has to say? and the wild deer hours show themselves as, still as gnomon, not frightened in the least by the clack of a filled moment emptied all the same by the deer scare. Mutable point of axis. Submerged leaves in the invisible flow over the settlements of the stream bed, as smooth a counter cross of movement as aircraft seen passing below the altitude we're at. Forward, but sideways, and seen faster than they are, as in a maelstrom of motions. They're almost pinned to spin on an axis of our passing, crossing over the intersecting craft below, throws it around behind you before it goes under and disappears. When we placed the gods overhead, it didn't occur, this is where they see from, that point where from above, Moving directions appear nonsense, just as here. That isn't newspaper rolling across the park lawn. It's a garbage of gulls, well above ground level, but below the view from these upper floors, blown gray wings, the day additions. Pages I didn't go down to pick up at the stand that now fly by out of my hands, beyond my grasp, as though scheduled crossings of planes as of the gods, crossings of planes of war or of stars, lovers, stars. The unintentionally memorized sounds you couldn't avoid hearing and during the day, during the night, returned to the surface like worms, out of flesh earth, out of the world's veneer of mouse pad, desk, wall, of X and Y, point interstice into line. The ear into the open picks up the phone. The sounds speak as a lush vegetation of an unidentifiable, nothing like it music ever heard before singing. You won't remember a note of this enduring the day. Here, what you don't listen to erase itself. Frequencies. Frequencies that are his melody to a song, he lifts out of white noise. 
water in water can be seen as a fish or that what percent of water of the human is swimming. Molecules in a molecule continuousness pulled into densities of perception as of willows dancing through a crowd of winds. And that green that green is, not even a wave length or curve of big hips, but more the eyes sampling of your lovely undulations over many seen surfaces and the brain's comparison softly one against the other. As I pull your green dress off over your head, out of that black spectrum of songs so relative to your body. The sharp, knee-deep cut of the blower is still there on either side, but I'm walking up a shallow brook of clear runoff in the path, water sparkling in the sunlight, shining pebbles and brilliant decay of rocks beneath its surface stuck to the concrete. Glacial morning, the flash thaw of last night's blizzard thunder and lightning echoes with tiny chimes of melting icicles, fragile as feathers in their sound, heard cardinal red clear against the snow light, branch to branch. The birds sent after the flood are here, in the light. Crow's silver brings back a pebble, a mud of blood. The blizzard camouflage dove, a branch of olive. A few sounds above absolute silence, this still, part hush, transparent as light, barely parts the morning air to speak. This light pushes upstream. Some days are closer to the beginning than others. This is a line from a um, Pakistani woman's diary. In it she says, all it takes is a stone to be thrown into the pond of memories for one to breathe in a distinctive smell or hear a sound for the birds, from the birds of forgetfulness to take flight from the, rest of, from the nests of oblivion. So I took that and uh, this is what came of it. All it takes. All it takes is a stone to be thrown into the pond of memories. Is one to breathe in a distinctive smell or to hear a sound for the birds of forgetfulness to take flight from the nests of oblivion. The short season of a skipped stone's row of bounce blossoms launched by the smell of creek water. The hairy slime of rock, moss lit through the ripples, the stone joins, even the birds overhead in their shadows, it's all here. Children throwing stones instead at the soldiers whose surface touched might return fire from the wound each ago, each now might still live, live through, each bounce over death, return to return, each breath to oblivion. Or maybe the birds abandon oblivion in need of each new forgetting, drawing the stones to lift themselves and each throw a line of the splash-winged flock returning, the dots signed, the diminishing arches of rainbow settle into water, our turn whether to regret creation. She seemed to want to say that, uh, that it was bad for the stone to be thrown. And what I kept trying to do was, in each of the stanzas, kept trying to lift the stone out of the water with a set of different images. The birds taking off, rainbows, arches of bridges, uh, birds abandoning the uh, idea of oblivion. That all leave us to the idea of whether or not, if the promise, if a rainbow is a promise of um, never wanting to, never actually destroying the earth again, what must all of those little rainbows be when a stone skips across the water? The dot sign, the diminishing arches of rainbow settled into water, and it's our turn whether to regret creation. I think this last one, I, I don't have synesthesia, 
uh, I have friends who do. And one of the things that's always fascinating to me is the way um, metaphor is so much like what they talk about. So what I'm trying to do in this poem is give people a sense of, uh, of um, certain things that have other things to them. Even the tiniest branch has its glass shadow cast beneath it in ice. And in the shadow, the spectrum opens its surprise of each of the colors in light. Soon a melt of wisteria will drip its all-day twilight. Petals from a climbing ramble toward coordinating with the sky, the transparent shadow cloud of its fragrance. I know this has its sound, just not one that returns the expectation of a listening except maybe a sweetness. Yes, we taste the sweet harmonious as well. The smell of honey has always made me nauseous, but the taste in tea, in cake, on biscuits is an exquisite, barely just tolerable too much, as is any too much made to fit where it isn't enough either as in the American synesthesia of trying to live a color. Thank you. <laughs>